What are we doing talking about team number 26? This is supposed to be the gold sheet top 25. Well, there were two teams that had the exact same power rating as our top 25 team. So we'll include them in the gold sheet 2024 summer countdown. And at the end of this video in Better's Edge, should you bet a college football total in July? I have. I released it to my clients, and I'm going to give it to you free at the end of this video. Let's start off talking about the TCU Horned Frogs and their odds for the 2024 season. These odds were as of July 31st. National championship odds, 250 to 1. Conference championship, 18 to 1. They don't have the line listed to make the college football playoff. Their season win total, seven and a half. Over is plus 125, under minus 150. To go undefeated, no line listed. And Josh Hoover for the Heisman, 250 to 1. Let's look back at TCU. Was their season better or worse than their record? Well, they had seven losses. And when you look at what their numbers are, you see that they were number 48 at plus 0 0.51 yards per play. On offense, yards per game, they were number 11. But scoring, they were only number 41. So they had issues in the red zone. They could move the ball but had trouble scoring. On defense, number 103 in yards per game, number 79 in points per game. They played a tough schedule at number 19. And when you break that out with their efficiency rakes, you, their efficiency ranks, I should say, offense was number 30, defense number 58. Now, when you look at their losses, they had four close losses. Those games decided by a touchdown and a two-point conversion or less. Guess what? They went over. They started off the season. The world was introduced. Sh Sh Shador Sanders. They trailed 17-14 at halftime, trailed 31-28 into the fourth quarter. There were six lead changes in the second half. Colorado goes 82 yards in six plays, scores a TD with just over four minutes to go. TCU on their final drive, stopped on downs at the Colorado 43. Against West Virginia, 7-7 after one, TCU led. 21-14 at halftime, but West Virginia scored 10 second-half points. They shut out the Horn Frogs, and TCU lost close game number two. At Texas Tech, Tech led 20-7 at halftime. Tech led 28-21 into the fourth quarter and extended the lead to 14 points. TCU's final drive got to their own 44, but interception, a loss. And against Texas, they trail 26 to 6 into the fourth quarter. A 21 3 cut the lead to three, but Texas was able to run out the last three minutes. So again, they did play better than their record indicated last season. Well, let's look at this 2024 team. And we'll start with the Big 12 Conference Cheat Sheet. You'll see we have them power rated number 21. That was the same as the previous team, Iowa State. 11 returning starters, four on offense, seven on defense, but they are returning a lot of production. They're number 39 in Connolly numbers. 11 returning starters, a little bit on the low side. They were only returning 10 starters last year, but the previous two years they had 18 and 18. So it's one more than last year, but it's down a, a good chunk from the three-year average that we often look at. In the draft, they lost three players for nine points. Two years ago, they lost no one. Last year in the draft, they did lose eight players for 24 points. Again, that's part of the reason they struggled early. For them to lose eight players for 24 points after the 2023 season left them bereft of a lot of talented players. They brought in 24 transfers. That's number three in talent as far as the Big Ten's concerned. And 13 transfers, 10 of them are likely to be starters. So you look at Oklahoma State, you may say they only have 11 returning transfers. If those transfers gel early, they can make some noise. 
the 2024 team. Quarterback Mel Morris started the first six last year. He was injured. Redshirt freshman Josh Hoover takes over, started the last six. Now, there was concern, some concern in the eight games that he threw at least one pass. He had an interception in 70 of them. Dykes will let him throw the ball. He's not worried about that. He had 50-plus attempts in three games. So he had the spot locked up. Morris did transfer. It is Josh Hoover's job. The running back. They lose their top two, including a 1,200-yard rusher. Bailey, that 1,200-yard rusher, is an unrestricted free agent for the Chiefs. So while he wasn't drafted, he is going to be a big loss. Receivers, they return their top two. Now the O-line loses four, including one NFL draft choice. But they have some talented transfers coming in. They have three transfers from San Diego State, La Tech, and Florida State that have a combined 60 career starts under their belt. So those three new players coming in have averaged 20 starts respectively. When you have an experienced transfer, quite a bit different. And usually they can gel much quicker. The defense, they have their number one and number three tacklers back from the top five, but they do only return four of the top nine, so they are missing some experienced defensive leaders. The D-line lost one. The linebackers lost one full-time and two part-time, so we'll call it two full-time starters lost. And the DBs did lose two, including an NFL draft choice. They have one coaching change. It is the D.C. We told you their numbers last year were not very good. Again, number 103 in yards per game rank, 79 in points per game. So they pick Andy Avalos to be their new D.C. He, of course, was Boise Coach's head coach for the last three years. The 2024 TCU schedule. Number 51, a week schedule, favored by nine or more in three games. We have them as a small favorite in six games and a small dog of a pick em, a one point, and a six point. So TCU, much like the last team we did, 11 of their 12 games are as a favorite or a dog up to one point. The only game we have them as a dog of more than that, at Utah, which, again, is just like the last team we talked about. They have buys before Utah and Arizona. Well, Utah has a buy, then plays at Arizona State. So they are, playing a, uh, they are playing one game versus a rest of TCU. And against Arizona, Arizona has a buy and then a home game against Houston. So not great bye weeks with both teams that they're facing having a bye the week, two weeks prior to facing this TCU frog. Teams with buys before TCU, SMU is the only team. Take a look. TCU will be playing their second road game and their fourth straight game against SMU. That game is a pick em, so there is an edge for the SMU Mustangs on September 21st. Well, before we get the better's edge and that actual client release that I already have loaded, for my college football customers. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. We hope you enjoyed the information and enlightened you a little bit about this number 26 ring team. Please do hit that like button. We certainly appreciate it. Comments, we enjoy comments even more. What you liked about these videos, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see added, what you think isn't worth talking about. Do you like the Better's Edge segment, Breaking Down the Coaches? Any comment you leave, we appreciate it. It helps our algorithm. We'll be back and respond to you as well. And again, thank you for taking the time to watch these videos. Better's Edge. Well, Sunny Dykes, La Tech for three years, Cal for four years, SMU for five years, and now a third season here. When we look at his entire body of work, He's 73 and 74 against the spread, one game under 500. Slightly to the over, 78 overs, 66 unders, and three pushes. Since 2016, 
when a Sonny Dykes team is at home, they have covered 23 of 35 games. They've gone 23 and 12 against the spread. On the road, just the opposite. Since 2016, only 13 and 21 against the spread, 38%. And as a small away favorite or an away dog, they have only gone 7 and 16 against the spread. He has beaten non-conference opponents. 14 and 4 against the spread, that is 78%. With one of those ATS losses as a big 25-point favorite. But away versus conference foes, dating back to his Cal days, 6 and 21, 22.2%. So strong at home, strong against non-conference, away overall and away against conference has been Dyke's downfall. When you exclude games as a favorite of seven or more away versus the Big Ten, how about two and 17 against the spread? Circle those on the calendar. And let's finish off with an actual client release for week one. Folks, all this work Goldsheet has done to prep for these videos, that's how prepared they are for this football season. Save $30 off the annual Goldsheet subscription. Sign up at Goldsheet or Wager Talk. Use the code GS30 and you'll save $30 off the annual subscription. This is a week one total. Game number 147, 148, TCU and Stanford. There are 60 and a halfs. There are 61s. There are 61 and a halfs. So make sure you chop, shop, check out the wager talk, live odds. You can look at what the variances are. The shortcut to check out the live odds at wager talk, wt.buzz backslash odds, O-D-D-S. This could be the earliest I've ever loaded a college football totals play in July. But TCU, when we talked about Hoover, we said that Dykes had a young quarterback and he still allowed him to throw the ball 50-plus times in three games. They are a fast-tempo team at TCU. In fact, they were number two in plays per game last year. And Dykes is 11-4 and over-under versus non-conference teams. And going back further, how about 20-6? and 77% to the over versus non-conference foes with a total of 60 or higher. In the season opener, Dykes will run up the score. They've averaged 42.1 points per game, and their season opening games have averaged 73.2 points per game. Now, anyone that follows college football probably is thinking, how the hell can you use Stanford as an over? We're used to having that old Stanford Cardinal team run the ball, a massive O-line, and they are going to go under. Well, the two years before Taylor took over as head coach, Stanford averaged 58 plays per game. Well, Taylor came over from Sacramento State. This team was exciting, fast-paced, and an offensive powerhouse. In fact, they were number three in the FCS in offenses last year. After averaging 58 plays his two prior years, he got them up to 70 plays per game last year. And guess what? Now with an experienced quarterback, now with his team learning how to play fast after having been accustomed to playing slow for so many seasons, I expect them to take off. I think this news will get out in the August camp. I think people are going to be on Stanford as an over team early. We're going to play this now. TCU and Stanford over the total. That is a week one college football play. And again, if you learned one thing in this video, please do take the time to smash this like button. I am Ralph Michaels. This has been Gold Sheet, team number 26.